Hi all, in this video, I'm going to give the answers of the interview questions that I've discussed in the previous shots. So the question number one was that in case of approval process, if manager tries to approve the record that we have submitted for approval, it has to be restricted from doing it. Okay, so the manager should be restricted from approving the record under some condition. How can we do it? So basically what they want is, let's say a person A submits the record for approval right okay and person b is going to approve the record now what do they want is that he, the person b should not be able to approve the record okay he should be restricted from approving the record on certain conditions so whenever we want to do a restriction like we want to do some kind of restriction there are two ways one is validation rule and another one is nothing i think so triggers okay now of course if it is if it can be done with validation rule it's much more better because it's like an admin task okay even if it is uh, not working in another environments we can quickly fix it okay like there is a quick fix if it is done in trigger that that would be a bit difficult to make changes on okay so validation rule looks much more better so let's jump to it now what i've done is i've created an approval process now integrated of this approval, approval process is that the status must be new okay the status first of all must be new Number one, okay. As soon as the status is new, okay, and you submit the record for approval, the status of this field named as approval status, okay, there's a field named as approval status. That field, so let's say A submits the record, okay, then approval status is changed to pending, okay. Approval status is changed to pending as soon as the person submits the uh, record, and when the it reaches to the person B who is a manager. If he tries to approve the record, okay, the status is changed to approved, right? Okay, if he approves the record, <clears throat> status is changed to this approval status, whatever this approval status is, is changed to approved, right? As simple as that. Now, basically, if I want to stop this person from approving the record, all I have to do is I have to write a validation rule that if approval status is approved, just don't let them save the record right simple so i've done the same right now if you see i've written a validation rule that if my is well the approval status is equals to approved okay if it is approved then just fire in validation rule that it cannot be approved okay what i'm trying to do is if my approval status is approved just don't let them validate so let's try it out now okay so this is my record that i have right now yeah okay fine so i'm going to the status is new so status is new then i mean i will be able to submit the record for the approval okay i will change the approval status to <clears throat> none right now okay now i'll be submitting the record the record will be submitted for approval as well because the status is new okay please approve now basically this record is going to go to the manager that person b okay i'm going to assign it to salesforce minutes <clears throat> The record has been assigned so this means the status is in pending right the person a has submitted the record for the approval status is pending now b is going to approve and it should be stopped because we have a validation rule right we have a validation rule now if i try to go ahead and change the status to approve as a manager i'm trying to approve okay please okay approved something like that now if i try to save it of course it should throw an error message because I'm as soon as I'll save it. Okay, what's going to happen is the status will be changed to approved, right? And according to the validation rule, the status if the status is approved, it will throw an error message. Let's click on it. The validation did not fire at all. Okay, so the answer to this question is you should not use validation rule, you should use trigger only and only trigger in some, such scenarios. Why? The reason is because the order of execution and this is a very classic example of order of execution first the validation rule ex executes and after that the approvals process executes right so what's going to happen is that let's say initially <clears throat> initially what happened is that your status as soon as you submitted the record for uh, approval what's going to happen is the status will be pending okay so till the point when the validation file the status was pending okay till the point where the validation fired the status was pending and after that approval process once the person approved the record the status was changed to approved 
so what happened is validation rule executed first when the status was pending so according to the validation rule the status was never approved right so it was pending so that's why validation rule did not work in this case but after that once the validation rule was surpassed then the approval process went and changed the status to approved but in case if you would have used the trigger what would have done is what would have happened is as soon as the status is changed to approved again the trigger would have fired before triggers and after triggers would have fired and it would have stopped and provided the validation that we need so answer to this question is you can only use triggers in such scenarios because of order of execution and you cannot use validation rule in such scenarios let's move to the next question that i have an assignment rule which changes the record owner to the qa and we have one flow which changes the record owner to both b okay and both the both of them have the same entry condition so basically what they are saying is case assignment rule has and uh, and uh, flow record trigger flow both have same entry criteria okay and what happens is if case assignment is going to change the owner to a and flow is going to change the owner to QB. Okay. On creating the record on case which matches the entry condition of both. So basically both of both of them have same entry condition. So both of them must be fired, right? Of both flow and uh, rule and checking assignment, uh, check assignment checkbox will be checked. Who will be the owner of the record? So let's uh, go to our Salesforce doc. Right now, you can see I have a case assignment rule. Okay. The case assignment rule checks that if case type a case type uh, the type of issue inside the case there's a type of issue field inside the case if the type of the issue of the case is shirt issue in that cases we are assigning the owner to shirt queue okay type of issue is shirt issue then i'm assigning the owner to the shirt queue and the entry criteria is very much important you can check the entry criteria is basically that if the type of issue is shirt issue okay and uh, one more thing that i have a flow as well record trigger flow which is activated that it checks that if the type of issue is a shirt issue, then it changed the owner to some queue. I provided the hard code already, but the queue is case through web. Okay, so case assignment rule is going to assign the ownership to shirt shirt queue, and the flow is going to assign the ownership to case through web. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and create a case. Let's go to the cases and let's go to case. Both of them have sent same entry criteria that the type of the issue we have type of the issue shirt issue. If I try to save it right now, okay. And one more condition was there inside it that uh, and check assignment checkbox, uh, check checking the assignment checkbox. So basically, we have to assign using uh, active assignment rule, that's what we have to check. And then in that case, if I'm checking this, who will be the owner of the record? Let's see. Let's click on save. Oh, case origin. So according to the, if I'm changing the type of the issue to the shirt issue, the ownership to, should be changed to assignment. According to assignment rule, it should be changed to uh, shirt queue. And in the case of flow, it should be changed to some uh, case through web queue, right? So let's save it. Where did it go? Yeah, sorry. So let's click on save. Okay. The ownership is changed to case through web. As you guys can see, what happens is I again I will show you. I'm going to go ahead and create a case because we might think that okay, assignment rule is going to take over, but no, flow did take over again because of order of execution. Okay, I'm going to keep the phone type of issue again. I'm going to keep the sh uh, shirt issue and I'm going to check this checkbox which is going to assign the ownership based on assigning assignment rule. Okay, according to that, if I check this checkbox, according to us, the ownership should be changed to this based on the assignment queue, but it is changing as per as the flow. Let's again try to do it. If you see again, the ownership is case through web. So even though I'm checking the checkbox of that assign using assignment rule, still flow is taking over and changing the ownership as per as its need. So this is again a classic example of order of execution. Next, let's move on to the next question. So here, who will be the owner of the record? Flow Q, that is B. In the case, B would be the owner of the record. Let's move on to the next question that I have a validation rule which fires when the case priority is high. But now it fires every time we make changes irrespective of priority field. What could be the possible reason? So basically they are trying to say is that 
<clears throat> so they have a validation rule instead of uh, one second I'll just deactivate this first of all validation rule so that it does not fires in between us I'm going to save it now there they have one validation rule instead of a uh, priority field I'm checking on origin field okay that it says that if the case priority is high, instead of that if case origin equals to phone okay, case origin equals to phone we are firing a validation rule now the problem with this approach is that let's say the, right now I have this case so first of all let me activate that validation rule now if you see the phone case phone is origin now I'm going to check I'm going to make changes to any other field irrespective of the origin field okay I'm going to make yeah something like that and let's click on save it's not allowing us the reason is because case origin is phone and because of that validation rule is fire even though I'm not changing the case origin phone so it does not make sense right let's say I have some record and if the, if the case origins for the old record before writing the validation rule I have few records and I'm trying to make changes to it but because of validation rule even I'm not changing that particular field I'm changing some other fields the validation rule is getting fired which does not make sense at all right so how do I fix it the answer to this question is we can apply is changed in this case so what we can do is we can use is changed inside it over here let's put is changed and copy the origin field and put everything in and now what's going to happen is that it's going to check first of all which field is changed first it's going to check whether the origin field is changed or not okay if it is changed then it is going to check whether the origin field value has phone or not if both the conditions satisfy only then the validation will fire so only when I'm going to make changes to this origin field the validation rule is going to fire rest of the time it's not going to fire so if I going to if I'm going to go ahead and save and now if I make changes to it test let's say and if I click on save it's going to allow me to save the record on the other hand if I'm going to make changes to the phone field only that is origin field only it's going to fire the error message so let's see if I'm going to make the origin to phone now it's going to fire so this makes a lot of sense so that it does not restrict the record if I'm making changes to some another fields so this was all about all the interview questions that I have discussed in the previous shots if you found this video helpful I request you to please like this video and subscribe to my channel